Hey folks, so in this video we're going to be looking at the gaze component. It came from the recent um, Epic Game Jam that I participated in and where I had a need to actually create a gaze mechanic where you stare at the door and the door uh, materializes, slowly materializes until you get transported to the next level. So I thought I'll create a component out of that and add it to my plugin. So here we are. All right, so let's do this. We've got the VR pawn and the game mode already set up for us here, but we're just gonna have to add a couple of things into this level. Um, this demo VR level it came with Unreal Engine so that we have something to play with for the gaze. So first I'd like to um, yep, maybe add a plane there into the scene. This is what we want the user to stare at or to gaze at and be able to activate. And let's just make this a little bit bigger than this. So there. Twice as big. Yep. And let's make it an actor uh, blueprint. So let me just put it in the proper location demo here. Let's just leave the name as plain underscore blueprint over there. And hmm. all right, so let's add a text render there as well. So we're going to put the um, a percentage of how long the user has been looking at this. Um, object or this actor into this text render and yep so let's look at it let's do a rotation here let's just do a 90 there i guess yep and look at it from the top to see if everything's centered and let's do the alignment to center and that and let's align it. All right, so that's looking okay. And let's do. We're gonna use uh, a percentage to show here. So let's just do that as a default. All right, that's looking good. Let's have a quick look again for here. All right, so we just need to probably do. A little bit of materials here. So on the static mesh, I'm just gonna find a good material, maybe one of my portal materials here. Yep. All right, that looks interesting. And text render. Let's change the color to yellow, just so that it stands out a little bit. Find the correct shade. Something a bit darker but bright enough. Yeah, I guess that should that would do. And let's just position this. Kind of want this a little bit forward, just so that it, I, you can see it a lot clearer. All right. All right. So just something quick and simple to for the user to look at. And once you have it there. Let's do a couple of rotations here. Um, maybe we need just looking at how that is set up. I could fiddle around with a gizmo, but I like just being a bit more precise from here. So negative 180, I guess. Yep, and negative 90. Yeah, looking good. So let's flip it a little bit more. I think that's it. So let's have a look and position that a little bit above. So kind of sort of the user needs to look at it from above. And yeah, so now we have something that the player can look at and we have a target as well that we can play around with, with a code. All right, so now we can do the code. Let's open up the pawn here. And the first thing that you're going to do is add the gaze component. So I'm going to just attach that to the camera. So the gaze component needs to be attached to a camera. Um, the reason is because the gaze component um, uses a camera as the origin um, during runtime. So that's where the gaze would start. All right, so you can trigger the gaze, um, start it and end the gaze as well. 
uh, manually. Uh, for this demo, we're going to do it from event begin play. All right. So event begin play, and we just put the gaze there. And yeah, so we'll just enable the gaze all throughout the demo. And we're never going to end it or stop gaze, the gaze mechanic. You have the option um, in your game or VR experience to end the gaze manually. So you do have that option here, just choosing not to use that for this demo, just to keep it simple. All right, so we've got the gaze, and this is um, you've got a couple of, couple of parameters here. So you got the gaze range. Gaze range is, of course, how far away can the player gaze and hit objects and try to find or hit actors. So I'm just gonna give that quite a long range. So 1,000, just to make sure we hit that target that we've set up here on the level. All right, and the target duration is how far, um, sorry, how long should the player be actually staring at that on an actor after it registers a hit um, before it sends out an event for an activate, to activate um, the the actor or something else even. So just we just need to be able to um, get the event for activating. So. And this is the one that kind of defines that. It's uh, gaze target duration, and three. It's currently set up in seconds here. So, oh, sorry, three seconds. So this is in seconds. And I guess for this demo, that should be fine. And the debug line is so that you could see where you're staring at, at least in the beginning when you're just trying to um, to do some prototypes. All right. And it's gonna be a little bit clearer once we start. Um, messing around with this. Actually, let's, let's quickly have a look at it. All right, so you could see the debug line there. So you could see the reach and where you're gazing at. The debug line comes from the top of the camera, but the actual ray cast or gaze starts from the middle of your eye. So only for comfort reasons did I put it on the top of the camera. All right, so let's continue on with our code here. So we'll open up the VR pawn. And before I forget, I'm just going to change that gaze range to 1,500 because it didn't seem to be quite hitting that target there. So, all right. And with the gaze component, you get three custom events that you can use. So on gaze hit, on gaze activate, and on gaze lost. So on gaze hit, is when you're um, looking at your scene and the gaze component um, registers a hit or finds something of a valid object and it returns that valid object uh, with a couple of other um, bits and pieces of information for you in this event on gaze hit so on gaze activate um, happens or gets triggered when you've been staring at that object for the target duration here so if it's three seconds, so if you've been staring at that for three seconds, it's going to register on gaze activate. And on gaze lost, um, wh what that is, is if you've been looking at something and then you stop looking at it, it will trigger on gaze lost and also return the last object, the last valid object that you've been looking at. All right, so those three are what we're going to be using as well for this demo. So let's just add them quickly. Um, Runeberg VR gaze, so we've got on gaze hit, on gaze activate and on gaze lost. All right, and just compile and save. And we're going to start off with on gaze hit. So you've got the gaze hit there, um, which contains a lot of information about the object and where the um, actual hit um, got registered. And you've got the percent active is uh, how long you've been staring at that object or you've hit that object um, by gazing at it um, in percentage. So let's say for this um, demo, you've, you were looking at the plane blueprint and you've been staring at it for one and a half second. This value here um, becomes 0.5, uh, representing 50%. So that's what percent active is. So let's split the gaze hit now and look at the other information that we have. So for this demo, I want to be able to um, do something only if we 
hit the plane blueprint. So I'm going to get the hit actor that we've hit and I'm going to cast that to a plane blueprint. All right. Obviously you could use any of this information here. It's available for you depending on the mechanic that you're um, trying to achieve in your game or experience. So cast a plane, plane blueprint and I'm going to set the text of that plane blueprint to um, the value on percent active. So just kind of clean this up a little bit. All right, so percent active. There is a blueprint node, should be one. Um, I think it's called as percent. Yep. So as percent um, converts um, this float like 0.5, 0.8 for 80 percent and stuff like that into a valid percent so it multiplies it by 100 and tacks on the percent symbol at the end you're gonna we're gonna see that in a bit uh, when we put on our headset so just do that set text pin that in and yeah so that should be it something quick and simple so that's for on gaze hit and when we lose the gaze, we want to be able to reset this percent to zero. So we'll use exact same, almost exact same node. So I'm just doing Control W, selecting all of those. Control W to duplicate all of the nodes. Split this struct here and on gaze it actor. Punch that in, and I could put 100 there or one, but Let's make a literal text, make it more efficient. So we do that there. And what text do we put in? 0.00%. Alrighty, so you've got on gaze hit, on gaze lost, and the last one is on gaze activate. So what do we do? We're going to do pretty much the same thing I guess for this. So control W, punch that in, split that, get the gaze hit actor, punch that in, let's just change the text to say done. Yep. Compile and save. And let's just have a quick look at this. Just want to center that a bit. Do some cleanup. And let's comment this gaze mechanic. There you go. And that's it. All right, let's give this baby a whirl. All right, so you could see that if we stare at this um, plane blueprint, it responds to our gaze and as well as losing the gaze. All right, so let's try to add a little bit of polish to the gaze mechanic. We've been using the debug line so we could see where we're looking at, um, but let's try to have a different mechanic for that because we don't want obviously debug lines um, before we publish or for an actual game or experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a target mesh as the kind of like the indicator for the end user that they're um, looking at something valid in the scene. So the target static mesh, if you click on VR gaze, you should have this variables here called under VR front gaze variables and you should have target static mesh. I'm just going to add a sphere here. So we could have yeah, mesh sphere. And I'm going to add a material, a red here. If you don't have um, a mesh, you could always just use the engine. Um, if you do show engine content, and then you should be able to find sphere there, one of the editor spheres. So. But I do have one here, so I'm not going to set. So, big mesh spear. Hmm. Not that one. Sphere. 
So now I have a lot of spheres there. So I'm going to use that sphere and 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Going to make it a little bit smaller so that it doesn't like occupy a huge space. Well, all right. So and that should be it. So what happens now is when you gaze at something, this sphere would come up where the target is. So on the correct impact location. So you don't need to set anything here. It will just do it for you automatically. At the moment, we're doing a pretty much um, shotgun approach to this gaze mechanic. Um, by that, I mean when you're looking at things uh, per the um, last try that we've got. Um, when I hit an object in the scene, such as this thing or this thing or this thing, it will trigger the on gaze hit, on gaze loss, and on gaze activate um, events, which may not be necessarily what we want or what you would want. So if we want to filter the objects that um, we want to register these events to, what you can do is click on VR gaze. You should have a under VR front gaze variables. There is a target tag um, parameter here that you can set. So let's say target, let's just call it target, right? So the target tag. So now what happens is the gaze won't, uh, the gaze component won't trigger these events if the actor that it hits um, doesn't have this tag. So it will only trigger these events if you have that tag on that actor. All right, so for the plain blueprint, let's add that tag. Tag. Let's, what do we call it? Target. Yep. Save, compile. And let's try it now. So there you can see that the red sphere comes up instead of a debug line when we hit the blueprint plane and not in any other object in the scene. And there you have it. So we've been able to filter the um, the objects that can get hit by this gaze mechanic um, simply by adding the um, a target tag in there. All right. And just make sure for the target tag is you compile and save and as well as for the the tag that you're putting on it should be an actor tag not a component tag but an actor tag here so actor tags and that should be it so any questions um, please just let me know in the UE forums or yeah just hit um, hit me up or send me an email all right so thanks guys hope this is helpful and see you on the next video Cheers.